Hello and welcome back to the Sports Booth YouTube channel. Today we are doing our way, way too early predictions for the 2027 Rugby World Cup. Now you're probably sitting there going, well this is ridiculous, Luke. We don't even know what the draw looks like. We don't know the teams in there. Well, we kind of do. Um, and we don't know what, what what's even going to be happening. All we know is in Australia, we know 12 teams have qualified. It's far too early to be doing this. exactly why I'm doing it. So... We're going to jump straight into it and look at, firstly, the new format of the tournament. 24 teams making up six pools of four. Top two from each pool goes through, and then the next four best third place getters. That's the way the tournament's working, tournament going forward like that. So we had four more teams to the competition. We know 12 teams have already qualified. Every single team that came in the top three in their pool uh, qualified for the 2027 World Cup from the 2023 World Cup. So from that, we have the one African nation in South Africa, one Asian nation in Japan, the six nations of the six European nations, six nations teams all get in. Australia, Fiji and New Zealand are from Oceania, and finally Argentina from South America. Twelve teams already in. So now we can kind of go, okay, wow, those twelve teams are already in. Where do we see more teams getting added in? Where, where could the possibility lie for teams to qualify, you know, there's been Oceania 1, Oceania 2, Africa 1, Asia 1. We had, you know, South America, and South America going to get their own qualification path um, so that United States and Canada have a better chance. So I've, I've kind of, I've gone like, these ones are likely to get through. They'll find their way in there. Samoa, Tonga, two teams will get in there, find their way in there. I don't know how the qualification path will look, but both of them will qualify, show that they're good enough in the last qualifications um, to get through, and then we'll do it again. Georgia, obviously the seventh nation of the six nations, will find a way to qualify and probably take out the top spot in the European Rugby Championship as they as they normally do. Uruguay, after their strong performances from back-to-back -back World Cups, will seem to find a way in the South American route, um, which if they open up another spot, opens up Chile to go through and then potentially uh, a Northern American spot open. With the Northern American spot, I imagine they're going to try and push, and I really do believe they'll try and push for USA and Canada to both be in there. Um, just big markets, why wouldn't you want them in your um, World Cups? And especially now that we're expanding it, those two teams who have been, I wouldn't say successful, successful at World Cups, but have shown competitiveness. We then jump into Europe, where we'll see... Portugal probably back. Spain, who did qualify this for this World Cup before being um, exiled, uh, taken away because they played an unregistered player or an ineligible player. And Romania. Uh, Namibia will go through from Africa. And then there's kind of, I've got one spot left open um, for the opportunity for a, uh, a Hong Kong, who, who played in the qualifying tournament. Uh, Kenya, who also played in that qualifying tournament. Uh, a Uganda, potentially, who just uh, beat... Kenya. It was a bit hard to judge, I guess, those other 12 teams that haven't qualified because we're not sure if they've qualified yet. So to judge them would be a little bit harsh. So what I'm going to do is actually break down top the top 10 teams kind of from the last 2023 World Cup. And I say top 10 with an asterisk. So there, look, I've, I've broken down the top eight, which are, yeah, quarterfinalists. And then I've chucked Australia and Scotland in as well. And I'm going to look at them because I think they're they're the most likely to come through in 2027 and actually push on for a, a, a chance at a World Cup glory. So I haven't really looked too deep into Italy and Japan, but again, in four years' time, we may see them up there. For now, I'm just focusing on the top 10 teams, which we're looking at South Africa, New Zealand, Argentina, England, France, Ireland, Fiji, Wales, and then again, Australia and Scotland to roll us out. And graphic go up now. So yes, this is how we're going to be looking at the teams, breaking them down. Um, I guess really getting into who could actually win this this, this next Rugby World Cup. Uh, starting with the Springboks, the world champs. Uh, winners in 2023 had an average age of 31 years old at this World Cup squad, which was the oldest of all teams. Coaching stability is obviously very good, um, purely because... They've got Razzie back, so uh, it is a, a, a dominant force in the rugby world. Club competition, they're playing in probably one of the highest, if not the highest, you could argue, top 14. Um, and Super Rugby could be up there, uh, but the United Rugby Championship. So let's run through, I guess, what ratings they're kind of going through and what I've done here. So the average age is obviously quite poor coming from this Rugby World Cup. Their coaching is high. Their history of World Cup success, very high. What I've done as well is I've worked out how many players are under the age of 34 for the next World Cup. Now, there will obviously be players over 34 still playing at the World Cup, but as we saw, it takes a superhuman to do that, Duhane Vermaelen, um, completing that. But uh, 
uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're struggling with age, South Africa, and it's going to be a slight rebuild. Uh, team is very good, but I think a slight rebuild. If there's one man who can do it, Razzie is in charge. Right, on to my New Zealanders. Second place in this World Cup. Average age of 28, coaching stability is good. Obviously, Razzie coming in, best super rugby coach of all time. How is he going to show when he takes that step up? Club competition, super rugby. A lot of questions around that. Obviously, very... Very high amount of experience in Australia, and fans, obviously, as we can tell from my speaking here, we are still bitter. So the average age is about about the median. That's where where we where we found uh, most teams were sitting at is their average age of about twenty eight of the World Cup. Coaching, I have put there unproven at the international level. So we'll see how Razor goes, and then obviously World Cup history in line there. Under twenties had a really poor performance for New Zealand standards in the under twenty World Cup just gone. Um, but they don't have many players over the age of thirty four for the next World Cup. But that's not such a big issue for New Zealand. What I probably should have done here is actually players who are available at the next World Cup, which I don't think we'll know until closer to the time. But you have the likes of Richie Moanga who wouldn't be at thirty four at the new next World Cup, or Brody Retallick who wouldn't also leave. Ah, uh, the Irish, the luck of the Irish, not so lucky at this World Cup. Uh, obviously, the result is that could stay on there forever. I guess, quarter final. Average age of 29, so just slightly above New Zealand. Uh, club competition is obviously the URC. Coaching stability is very good. One of the best coaches in the world, Andy Farrell. World Cup history has to be down there because you can't say much when you don't make it past the quarter finals. Under 20s performed very, very well. Um, so a good next generation for them, but they're very similar to South Africa, whereas a lot of their players, although, although the average age was 29, sit around those early 30s with a couple of older ones like Johnny Sexton. Um, that will be above the age of 34 for the next World Cup. So interesting times ahead for Irish rugby, really. When people started talking about who, you know, needs to win this Rugby World Cup that's just been, Ireland was obviously up there because this is a golden generation, you could call it. Um, and I think they will they will be in a little bit of trouble. The Welsh is a really interesting prospect. Um, obviously, there was some um, craziness happening before the World Cup with what that what was going on. Um, but in the end, they made it to the quarterfinal and looked very good doing so. An average age of 29 was really heightened by some older players um, in the team. Obviously, with Warren Gatlin there and um, pretty keen to stay there for the next World Cup. It's a solid stability. Um I guess their, their rating, average age, decent, coaching, very good. World Cup history, they've had some, more than um, Ireland making it through to a couple of semifinals. Under-20s went well, and they've got a lot of players still under the age of 34 for the next World Cup. So if they can build nicely, this, this could be a new generation of the Welsh that could lead them um, really well. The Scots will be disappointed with their pool stage exit, an average age of 29, coaching stability solid. I really don't know what to make of Gregor Townsend, has had some really good results for Scotland, um, but will be disappointed with how how the World Cup went. Uh, URC as well, average age is, you know, like there's a lot of things there that aren't looking pretty. The under 20 side didn't even play at the World Cup, they're in the second, the trophy level, so I believe they've just qualified to get back up, but a disappointment for where. Six Nations under 20 rugby is Scotland a disappointment there, um, but looking good for the players under 34 for the next World Cup, a very good chance to to put their stamp down on the rugby world. Ah, the English, third place out of nowhere, 28 average age, coaching stability solid, um, average age was middle, as, as, it, as what I've said before, coaching, I've just put it slightly below par, I don't know enough about Warfoot yet, and I haven't seen enough, I thought he coached at the World Cup really well, but I want to see some results over time. History is good. Under twenties were very good, and uh, the World Cup for thirty four and above, um, they are looking excellent for players below that. So the English are looking to build really nicely from what Borfwick's done, and he's mentioned it in a couple in uh, couple interviews with a young squad that he's had. Our host nation, the Wallabies, yes, a pool stage exit, disaster. Average age of twenty six, as we all know, youth over experience was Eddie's, uh, I guess, motto. Uh, coaching stability rock bottom don't even have a coach at the moment Super Rugby uh, it's the home team so you'd hope that they have a little bit of experience there and I think the fans are just praying for some hope for for, for something I don't know what you give them now they're so dead uh, ask my co-host Husey the ratings yes average age excellent obviously coaching poor because we had Eddie Jones who, who, who screwed the gaff and then uh, now nobody in charge World Cup history, obviously good, won two World Cups, but in recent years, 2015 made a final, 2019 um, and 2023, not ones to look back on. Under 20s actually performed better than the New Zealand team, but probably could have been better with the squad they had, I think, really pushing teams. And again, it's that age thing, it's it's probably a little bit, um, 
And I should have put a, maybe another tab in there just for Australia for performance at the last World Cup, and that would have been below there because it looks better than it is. The youth is obviously a big thing that Eddie went through, and as he said, you know, he may have had to eat shit for eventually Australian rugby to succeed. And if it does turn around to be that happen, you know what? I'll be the first to put my hand up and apologise to Eddie Jones. Lost Puma is a really interesting one. Finished fourth, had a bizarre World Cup, I'd say. Uh, 28, the average age, as I have said before. Um, I'm, I actually, and I put very dependent there for the coaching stability, because who knows? Like, I know, I'm sure Czech is not going to be there. I'd be very surprised. He's got so many offers flying around. Um, so I don't know who's in charge. Uh, so yeah, they're bang in the middle of everything. The under-20s are all right. The World Cup history's good, but not great. Coaching, we just don't know yet. Um, average ages in the middle and players for the, under World, for the World Cup who are under 34 in the middle as well. So it's a it's a tipping point for Argentina. They could turn it and go incredibly well, could absolutely falter, and we'll see them out of the pools next World Cup. I don't think that'll happen. But again, they're on a knife edge. The French quarterfinal exit again, home World Cup, very disappointed. Average age of 27, so slightly below what everyone else has, which is good. Coaching's ability, very good. Club competition, top 14, as I said, probably one of the best in the world. Average age uh, is decent. Actually, this is this is one I should probably sit here and talk a little bit about. Other than World Cup history, France under-20s were fantastic, won the, won the under-20s World Cup. Um, they are looking really good, actually, for Australia. And I know everyone was saying, oh, home World Cup, this is their chance. I actually think that they've got a, a really good chance coming up to the World Cup in 2027 and it would not surprise me to see them do very well with the players they've got coming through, the current players in their squads, the age they all are. Yeah, watch out for France is basically what I'm saying. Alrighty, the Flying Fijians, the last slide before I break down who I actually think is going to win the uh, Rugby World Cup in 2027. Uh, the Fijians finished in the quarterfinal, average age of 26, so a very good average age. Obviously, the coach just recently stepped down, so we don't know what's going to happen there. I put them at the bottom of World Cup history just because they've only made quarterfinals um, and we'd love to see them make a semi final. Super Rugby, which has been fantastic for them. Um, good experience in Australia. Again, Super Rugby, a lot of the players will play there. Fans are just always happy, you know. You just run into Fijians and they're always happy just to see rugby. Average age, again, very good. Coaching, we're not sure. World Cup history, low. Under-20s had, had it all right. Under-20s um, for a Pacific nation, a small Pacific nation. And again, the players under 34 for the next World Cup is going well. I actually think Fiji and other dark horse are ready for the 2027 World Cup. If they can get a good plan in place now with the Judah already performing in Super Rugby and performing well with how that squad's building, um, yeah, watch out for Fiji. So with that, let's quickly go through what I think could potentially happen in the next World Cup. Round of 16 is what we'll see. Uh, I see the 12 teams, the top 12 teams making it. I don't see any of South Africa, Japan, England, France, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, Italy, New Zealand, Australia, Fiji and Argentina missing out. I think all 12 of them make it. I think Samoa will be in there again. Tonga is one of those teams that will be on the edge, I think, of a third place finish and it'll come down to, to point stiff. Georgia and Uruguay are two teams to watch out for. I think potentially those make up our 16, but I don't want to you know, count out a USA, a Portugal, who showed at these World Cups that they're there. But if I'm taking it, to be honest, I'm taking those 12, I'm then taking Samoa, Tonga, Georgia, and a bit of an outsider just purely because I think people are going to underestimate them because they weren't at this World Cup. Spain have been growing rapidly, doing really well. I think Spain actually uh, wants to watch, and I think they'll get through to that round of 16. Then from the round of 16, I think we see eight big teams make it. I think we see New Zealand. I think even though it's a rebuilding year for South Africa, I think getting into the quarterfinals uh, and making that top eight, yes, I see France making it, I see England making it, Scotland and Wales, Australia and Fiji, yes, I'm calling it now, Ireland to miss out on even the quarterfinals. I just think their squad's obviously very old. This is, this is we're way too early to be saying this, but I think Fiji actually do make it through to the, to the top eight in the quarterfinals, and I think one of those teams are going to be shocked. I've gone with Ireland here. Um, I think it could be, you know, Anyone there that that in that top twelve have a have a right to put their hand up and say we can make the top eight on our day. Then into the top four, I've gone New Zealand, France, South Africa, and this is about a cop out because I don't. I think South Africa is going to be rebuilding. I just don't see South Africa not 
they love World Cups. They know how to do it. Razzies in charge. What am I? Like, what are we saying? If I say no, they're out. That's just stupid. But again, I'll probably get close to the time and then start making counter arguments. All the arguments I'm making, and that's why I make him as a shot. But I think Australia at a home World Cup in four years' time, if they get the right people in place, they could make it. Semi finals. I think New Zealand versus France final in Australia in 2027. Tell me in the comments who you think wins that. But I want to know who you think makes or wins that final if it was a France-New Zealand final in Australia at the MCG with 110,000 fans sitting and watching. Who wins that game? Who wins that game? Please make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. You know, give me a comment. Let me know who you think can make it through this World Cup, where I've gone wrong, who I'm way off with or if there's someone that I haven't even mentioned that could be coming through a nation, a young nation. Um, but for now, I've been Luke from the Sports Booth. Goodbye. Bye.